Now, let's look at some other stories. Lawyers for the 29 people arrested on the first day of Arise Ghana's uh, Krum Ayeshe demonstration, uh, which turned violent, say they have all been granted bail. Uh, a charged crowd gathered at the Obra spot on Tuesday, determined to march through the Ring Road uh, to the Jubilee House to present concerns on the high cost of living, bad governance, corruption, uh, insecurity, among other things. However, pushback by the police turned chaotic. Uh, the second day of the protest was quite peaceful. Uh, leadership of Arise Ghana Group uh, presented their petition to the Ministry of Finance and Parliament, asking for immediate government intervention. Here's Maxwell Agbagba with a wrap of the two-day demonstration. Proud to the protest, there was a back and forth um, between organizers and the Ghana Police Service. The disagreement was mainly about the route for the protest and the time. The Ghana Police Service um, had argued that with the threat of terrorism on West African coastal states, it wasn't um, proper for the protest to go deep into the night. The protesters and the organizers of the demonstration disagreed. The matter ended up in court with the court ruling that the protest should take place from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It also set a defined route for uh, the protest. On the day of the protest, there were disagreements. Organizers of the protest had argued they had filed a stay of execution on that particular ruling by the court, and that puts that ruling by the court in abeyance. Police also disagreed and said it was implementing the order that it got from the court on the defined route that should be used. The situation degenerated and turned chaotic when some of the protesters started pelting police with stones. Police fired tear gas to disperse the routers crowd. Ghana Police Service said it was also compelled to use water cannons to disperse the crowd. 12 police officers were injured. Some protesters were also injured in the process. The second day of the protest was very peaceful. A litany of issues triggered the protest. Key amongst them was the electronic transactions levy, which came into effect um, some weeks ago, despite opposition from many people um, that it would bring untold hardship um, on them. Currently, there are about 12 taxes and levies on the price of fuel, which contributes um, to the price buildup and how much um, people pay at the pumps to get fuel. The organizers say that the cost of fuel is too much and they are calling on governments um, to eliminate some of the taxes and levies imposed um, on fuel, which is contributing to what they describe as the astronomical price uh, build-up. National Communications Officer of the main opposition party in Ghana, NDC, Sami Jemfi, has been speaking about some of their concerns. When we go to the pumps, whether you are NDC or MPP, you will pay 61 Ghana cities for a gallon of diesel today under the insensitive Akufuado Bawumia government. Whereas we were paying only 14 Ghana cities for a gallon of diesel and petrol in 2016. This has had a negative cascading effect on prices. Never in the history of this fourth republic, never in my adult life, have I seen inflation hovering around 27, 28%. This is unprecedented, we are all suffering. The only people chilling is President Ekufuado, President, uh, uh, Vice President Baumia, and their cabal of family and friends who continue to milk the state coffers dry, who continue to travel in ultra luxurious and hyper expensive private jets at the expense of the poor Kenyan taxpayer. We are saying that we can't take that. We have had enough of the wastage and the corruption and the looting of state assets. We shall rest not until the prices of fuel comes down drastically. We shall rest not until this government is held accountable for how they expended COVID-related funds. We shall rest not. The protesters submitted a petition to the Parliament of Ghana and uh, the Ministry of Finance. If a Deputy Finance Minister, Abna Osei Asaru, received the petition on behalf of government, she said government will, in the coming days, roll out policies and programs to mitigate the impact of the harsh economic conditions many, uh, many Ghanaians are facing. 
Um, she says on Monday, government engaged some stakeholders on what can be done to also deal with the high cost of um, the prices of food. I'm happy to announce to you that government has already started meeting relevant stakeholders to see how best we can address this economic situation that has arisen as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian-Ukraine war. On Monday, government with the relevant ministers met some important stakeholders on the rising food prices. Government will continue to meet all the relevant stakeholders and make sure that together we come out with policies and programs that will address the issues that you have raised here today.